Today we are working on a stand-up jet ski. The hull is a Richter, which is based off a of Yamaha. Same with the motor setup. Typically, if you're familiar with the Super Jet, um, that's kind of Yamaha's um, main stand-up jet ski that they've had since the early 90s. Well, this is an aftermarket hull, so basically they modeled a hull um, to be better than what's already mass produced so the the engine is Yamaha based by based I mean the mounting and certain aspects of it um, are shared with the Yamaha like the electrical box uh, fuel tank that's a stock superjet fuel tank however the motor itself is aftermarket so it's a billet motor um, you know billet um, carburetor manifold that type of thing um, the manifold here, this is a factory, it's called a factory B pipe. So it's a head pipe here, and this again is uh, Yamaha style. So this is um, basically you can use this on, on a super jet, you can use this on this motor, um, but not Kawasaki. So that's kind of where the split is. So the issue this one's having is um, this pipe is incredibly hot. So it's not getting any kind of water flow or cooling. Um, the manifold itself is okay. Um, the engine is okay. And we have water uh, circulating through these um, hoses, which cool the head in the engine. And then we have water circulating out of this hose, which goes here to the manifold. And then one end of it comes out here. I'll talk to you in a bit about it. The other end, um, goes out the same way that these come out. So one way you can make sure your everything's working okay is if you keep an eye on these hoses outside where they're spraying water, you know there's water flow coming out. So this this is an I odd issue because there is flow coming out of those four, and there all that there is also flow some kind of flow coming through this because the water is making its way out that way. And then there is water coming out this way to the end of the pipe. So the end of the pipe gets injected with water as well. Sometimes people put on these, um, it's basically just a spring and a ball, like a plastic ball or a metal ball that restricts the flow of water coming through. So typically on idle or off idle, you don't want water pumping into your water box. So that this stops the water from traveling through until you hit the throttle and it builds enough enough pressure and then shoots the water through. So I removed this, didn't seem to do anything because there's still water coming through here either way, um, which is kind of where I'm back to here again, because it's kind of an interesting issue. There's gotta be some type of blockage somewhere, um, but basically I'm at the point where I'm gonna take out the pipe, pull the manifold, check everything, flush it out. Um, because I have found uh, pebbles and stones in this 90 degree fitting which goes here and blocks flow. Nothing in here. It's totally clear. Um, and the other thing is um, you can basically reverse the flow of water. So normally water is coming in from the pump in the back and then making its way up through here and then out of the side of the hull. Well if you put a hose in the hull and put water this way Essentially, theoretically, you're, you're flushing everything backwards the way it came. So that's supposed to dislodge anything, clear it all out. Um, but again, I mean, that didn't work either. So this this is just like, this. you can see a little of the staining up here. The original hose that was black completely melted to the pipe. Um, and actually the battery straps, which are right, there are two battery straps. These got so hot because of this... Um, silicone tube that comes out of the water box and goes to the exhaust that tube got so hot it melted the battery straps so uh, I replaced this hose thinking that um, you know maybe it was this maybe it was the pipe here uh, another thing I won't really get into but this pipe has three screws so there's one on top one in the middle and then one on the bottom and that regulates the flow of water through this and the pipe so people, um, there's a lot of people that tune these. Different screws do different things for bottom end, mid-range, top end. 
um, but I even backed these screws out. I'm like, well, maybe they're not out enough. Maybe something got stuck. Still nothing. So, just inspect. Oh, that really hurt. <laughs> oh God. Just inspecting this. Um, this hose is extremely hard, and I'm bleeding pretty severely because of this clamp. Um, this hose is extremely hard, so that tells me it's got incredibly um, hot. This hose is not nearly as, as hard as this top corner piece. So that's kind of um, interesting. I'll have to uh, inspect this T, but I blew through the T, and initially, I mean, I can kind of see through it too, and there's nothing visibly in there, so... Hmm. That at least tells me Unless this, this pose here after the T is just far enough away from the manifold that it didn't get hard and crispy. But uh, I'll see. Um, the other thing I was looking at was uh, that I need to install actually. This, this is not in the right place, but I just put it here just to have it. Because before... I actually had a pebble um, clogged in here, this hose and in the outlet on the on the hull side. So I'm like, well, it's better here than nowhere because I have to take out the manifold and the pipe again um, to run a new hose. And then um, this hose doesn't come from the pump, but there's another hose further down that feeds the bottom of the manifold that comes from the pump. So that hose is supposed to have this filter because then you're filtering everything coming in from the pump. But to do that, I need to basically um, redo the hose from the pump outlet and then loop it up so this is still accessible somewhere up here and then loop it back down into the pipe. But this is really nice. Blosion carries this. Um, it's just a nice filter and it, it catches a lot of stuff in here. A lot of sand and grit. And it has a super nice screen also and you can see even, you know, there's some grit and algae in there. So. I know that's doing its job, I just gotta move it. But uh, now that I give you a nice overview, um, I'm just gonna take off this manifold. There's two 14 millimeter bolts here. And then I think I have to pull the tank or loosen it so I can get this pipe off of the manifold, possibly. Uh, I might be able to wiggle the manifold off of this pipe and then take this off and then take that off. We shall see. Um, but beyond this, uh, we can go into even um, plug reading and looking at the um, combustion chamber in another video, or this video if we have time I can stick it in there. Uh, but there's a lot of things I've learned riding these and kind of working on them myself and integrating all my other uh, automotive knowledge and mechanical knowledge and um, things others have taught me about two-stroke and carbureted stuff that I did not know. So. Um, we will move on. I'll get this off and I'll be back. So here we have a hose with the fitting and connector basically into one port of the manifold just to ensure that water flows completely through to the other side. Um, so that looks okay. I'll basically put on the fitting on this one and then reverse the flow the other way just to make sure that uh, that looks okay. And then on the pipe itself this is just a hollow pipe and uh, here's that fitting on the end and then this just spits out into here so there's nothing there's no multi layers of anything or different chambers it just kind of is that the exhaust gas comes through here and then extra water gets spit into there so this is looking okay. I did not find any kind of rocks or pebbles that might have uh, been clogging everything, so we'll continue on the search. Alright, so here is the manifold coming off of the motor. Now this has a hose right here. So this is the one I was talking about. This comes directly from the pump. So the pump feeds into this manifold and then the rest of the motor gets um, water through the top part of this pipe uh, 
part. And by top part, I mean there's a fitting towards the bottom. So this is the line I have to uh, put the filter on. So essentially all pump water is going to get filtered. And then, like I said, I'll mount it maybe up here somewhere accessible in the middle um, so I can clean it and remove it. And then we'll run the outlet back down into the bottom of the manifold. So obviously everything else was getting water. Um, so this feed line is okay. Um, so the water was traveling uh, through the motor okay, but the problem was somewhere between the head pipe or the the, the J pipe or the elbow and then um, the chamber. So I flushed it out. Whether or not anything came out that was clogging it, I don't know. I didn't see anything. I didn't see any crazy large pebbles or anything. Um, but I was able to sneak this out just by loosening this tank strap and then pushing the tank over. It's an incredibly tight fit between this um, part of the hull to get it out and uh, the motor mounts and the, the, um, the frame down here or bracket or whatever you want to call it, the engine mount or the engine cradle. But it came out. Um, another thing to notice, this is 47 millimeters. Earlier B pipes were um, 42 millimeters. So make sure you get the right gasket for your application. Uh, they do sell a larger one if you happen to port yours out or whatever. Uh, but 47 millimeters is the standard. Um, these power valves you should be cleaning or replacing or rebuilding every, I don't know, X amount of time. I've already done it. Actually, this is a brand new motor, so don't need to do it now. But uh, take them out, clean them, and obviously you have to take this pipe out to get these bolts. Um, and that's about Alright, so I got some insight from a local jet ski legend, Paul. Um, we have flow again through the screws. So this is the uh, lowest screw on the bottom. That's about three quarters of a turn out, which is what's recommended by factory pipe. And I checked, so I removed the screws and I checked flow out, but I did not check flow into the pipe. And frankly, there was enough carbon in there that it didn't even look like there was a hole. So, you need a uh, 564 Allen to adjust the screws. And then I used a one millimeter pin to basically push through and clean out this hole from the outside. So there's a combination of sand and carbon just blocking the passage. So pretty thrilled now. Um, it was definitely, definitely clogged because there was absolutely nothing coming into this pipe from either the bottom screw or the top screw um, because they were clogged. So. That's it, that's what it should look like. Um, I do have a filter that's gonna filter. Let's just show that real quick. So I have this filter that Blosion sells. Um, I'm gonna filter water from the pump before it gets to the motor to hopefully eliminate this issue. Um, this is already on my other jet ski and it, it doesn't really get too clogged. Um, I don't do too much distance riding. It's more or less just put, put around, do tricks, and, and that's about it. So we'll see how it clogs up. Um, I mean, I can always get rid of it if it clogs up a lot. But like I said, at least this way, I'll know all the water coming in from the pump is going to be filtered before it gets to the motor. So that's it. Now the video's over. Now we have... Uh, evidence and uh, conclusion and all that good stuff um, I just I really literally didn't know what I was supposed to come in directly uh, through the pins the pinhole so that's it hopefully this helps some guys out a lot of times these screws can be really seized up in here they do make um, replacements and then ones with like T handles but you don't really need to adjust these so I recommend just the original ones so that's it, we'll get back together and try it out. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you want anything clarified or explained further. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do the water routing. 
Um, some people don't run this line to the bottom. Some people don't run the, they only have, you know, one line on the head, not four. So there's a lot of different ways that can be done. Um, but I do have good pictures of the combustion chambers and then um, adjusting the carburetors, kind of reading the piston wash. So if that's something, the video I want to be interested in, I can definitely do that next. Just let me know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, until next time.